Welcome everyone. So, uh, uh, welcome all to IDCPC. Uh, uh, I would like to introduce Dr. Sobia Asad Khan. She is a year three resident at Microbiology Department, Akhan University Hospital. And she will present an important case, uh, a unique case of, uh, so we will discuss this case in the, let's see what she is presenting. Thank you. Sobia, go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, everyone, and thank you so much, Dr. Zishan, for the introduction. So, um, welcome everybody to the forum, and uh, I'll be taking you all to a joint venture. So, uh, let's begin with it. So, my case is a 16-year-old female who is a known case of thalassemia major. She has complaints of on and off fever for one month and unilateral knee joint swelling for one week. According to her father, she was admitted to ICU in a tertiary care hospital in Lahore one month back and was managed as dengue fever. She had difficulty in walking thereafter and had a minor trauma to the knee due to fall on floor. Knee joint aspirate was sent to Aga Khan Hospital for culture and sensitivity. However, the detailed report of the synovial so uh, keeping this history in the um, back of the mind, what more would you like to know? Uh, this is a history of uh, chronic fever and um, um, knee joint swelling. So um, the things that uh, I could come up with were family history of tuberculosis, because definitely we are living in a TB endemic region and any um, uh, undefined chronic fever, we would uh, think about TB as well. Then the fever pattern is very important. Was it high grade fever? Was it continuous fever? Was it uh, something related to um, uh, uh, bacteremia? Or was it um, uh, undulating or waxing, or waxing or waning fever? So the pattern of fever is very um, suggestive of uh, the type of infection that we are suspecting. Uh, it could be step ladder pattern, uh, which could suggest um, uh, maybe uh, salmonella uh, typhi arthritis. So the fever pattern was very important to know. However, we couldn't gather um, that much detailed history as this patient was not inpatient and uh, we could only contact the father. Uh, so uh, history of previous blood cultures would be important. And cardiac examination findings, uh, definitely when we are looking at a patient with undefined fever, we have to look at other foci of infections that uh, the organism might uh, have caused. So cardiac examination findings for any signs of endocarditis uh, and then the history of animal or livestock, uh, livestock exposure and consumption of unpasteurized milk. So laboratory workup. Uh, unfortunately, they did not send us uh, any um, gene expert or microbacterial cultures, and uh, the blood cultures were also not requested. So we only received uh, synovial fluid cultures, and the gram stain of the knee joint aspirate had rare pustules, but no organisms. Uh, so as a routine uh, 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 of um, sterile fluid, uh, we set up uh, chocolate agar, sheep blood agar, and McConkey's agar, and they were incubated at appropriate temperatures. 5% uh, um, chocolate and SBA were incubated in 5% CO2, and the McConkey's agar in uh, ambient air at 37 degrees Celsius. Cooked meat was also set up, and a sheep blood agar was incubated anaerobically as well. So moving on. After 48 hours of incubation, there was fine growth on chocolate and she blood agar of about 0.5 to 1 millimeter convex colonies that were non-pigmented, non-hemolytic, and had an entire edge. But there was no growth on McConkey's agar. Some rapid tests were performed uh, on the basis of um, this, uh, um, uh, these uh, suggestive colonies. Um, however, uh, there was one thing that uh, uh, there's, however, there's one thing that uh, should be done uh, before performing these rapid tests, and uh, I'll ask um, the audience later on when uh, we are coming to the diagnosis. So, a uh, gram stain was done from the colonies, which uh, showed gram negative cocobacilli. Catalase was done, which was positive, and oxidase was strong positive, and rapid urease test was also positive within 30 minutes. So this is the colony morphology. Uh, in the picture one, you can see uh, chocolate agar and there's fine growth of um, 
uh, very fine growth of grayish white colonies, which were opaque. Uh, the colony morphology was not very much appreciable on this uh, agar, as this is the isolation, and the primary chocolate plate only had two to three colonies, uh, which were very pathognomic. So uh, then. The blood agar plate uh, showed few colonies of again convex uh, entire uh, colonies with entire margins, non-hemolytic, and uh, they were opaque as well. And uh, as you can see in the on the McConkey plate, there was no growth. Moving on to the gram stain morphology, uh, the gram stain had uh, the gram negative cocoa bacilli as shown in this picture, um, and urea was positive within 30 minutes. So based on these uh, rapid tests and the colony morphologies, uh, what comes to your mind? This is my question to the audience. You can um, type it in the chat box. So um, any answers? Um, Gram negative cocoa bacilli, which was growing on chocolate and blood agar, but not on McConkey agar. Was oxidase positive, rapid urease positive? Might be on Okay, so uh, somebody wrote Brucella hemophilus, uh, Brucella again. Okay. Yes, uh, so um, definitely uh, Brucella. Uh, is one of the top differentials. Uh, hemophilus, somebody wrote, but uh, can anybody defend why it couldn't be hemophilus based on these rapid tests? Coco bacilli, okay, but hemophilus can be pleomorphic as well. So, um, okay, so I'll just uh, give away the... Um, Yes, urease, or definitely. This was rapid urease positive. Uh, Haemophilus is uh, urea negative. Uh, and uh, then also, um, uh, th it was growing on uh, the blood agar, and uh, Haemophilus um, uh, grows only on blood agar in the presence of satellitism. So, yes, uh, these were the two things that I could think of. And yes, strong oxidase positive. Dr. Kossa, thank you. So what am I? Uh, this leads us to the diagnosis of Brucella arthritis. So uh, on the basis of uh, uh, these conventional tests, we did uh, identify it, but there are certain phenotypic features of Brucella species that can be performed in laboratories, uh, which uh, one of those is the growth on dye uh, at routine testing dilutions. And basically the principle behind this is three dyes are used, which is fusion, uh, thionine, and safranin. And uh, we know from basic microbiology um, uh, knowledge that there are certain dyes which have inhibitory effect on certain bacteria, like crystal violet, which is used in McConkey agar, uh, has inhibitory effect on the gram-positive uh, organisms. So, um, uh, so the, uh, these certain dyes uh, are used for the presumptive, uh, for the, um, the uh, identification of uh, Brucella species. And uh, however, these are not practiced routinely because uh, these are labor intensive and uh, the dyes need to be uh, near boiling point while uh, being mixed and they have to be frequently mixed so that it doesn't, uh, so that it don't precipitate. So it's labor intensive. So usually uh, these kind of tests are not performed. The secondly, sulfide production, uh, Brucella abortus is uh, sulfide positive, whereas the rest of them are negative. Then the urease uh, positivity, uh, the time duration. So the crust over here is that if the urea become positive within 15 minutes. So at least we can rule out Brucella sui and canis. Uh, however, in our case, it took at least 30 minutes. So uh, yes, we at least came to this um, conclusion that it's not sui or canis. Uh, then again with lysis, uh, phage lysis. So phages are, we all know, um, viruses that uh, infect uh, bacteria and cause cell lysis. So the pattern of the lysis may be suggestive uh, and diagnostic, uh, sorry, for species differentiation. Moving on to the epidemiology. So now that we know um, uh, this case was uh, of Brucella arthritis, so 
where do we stand in um, the burden of brucellosis worldwide? So endemic areas for brucellosis include countries of the Mediterranean basin, Middle East, Central Asia, China, the Indian subcontinent, Sub-Saharan Africa, and parts of Mexico and Central and South America. Uh, worldwide, the burden is about 500,000 cases reported annually and estimated 2.4 billion people at risk. And the most invasive and patho uh, pathogenic type of human brucellosis is due to brucella militensis, followed by abortus and Swiss. And this was mostly uh, data from the United States. So uh, this was a very good review published in the Lancet Infectious Diseases, uh, show the global burden of brucellosis. The uh, red shaded areas are the places with highest burden and more than 500 uh, um, cases per 1 million population, which is the Mongolia. And then these blue regions are the ones with uh, lesser um, incidence and they usually, uh, mostly include the developed world like United States, Canada. We, on the other hand, fall in the yellow region, uh, which is um, uh, from where there's no data. And the reason is because uh, we do have uh, local studies. However, brucellosis is not a noticeable uh, disease in our area. So no surveillance and no global data. Um, and the pink region over here, as you can see, is um, uh, the um, Middle Eastern countries and Turkey, and uh, which includes uh, the Middle Eastern countries like Saudi Arabia and Kuwait uh, being the hub of uh, this disease. So moving on uh, to do local studies that have been performed. Interestingly, all of these studies are from the same group of people and uh, more or less from the same regions as well. So uh, this was performed, uh, uh, published in 2016 on pregnant women. Uh, seroprevalence was seen, 5.8% seroprevalence, seroprevalence was found. And uh, it was significantly associated with abortion history and experience of an IUD. And um, in the multivariate analysis, contact with animals was a robust risk factor. Uh, similarly, another study by the same group of people performed in the same, uh, more or less uh, similar region, um, that is the Punjab, and uh, they checked um, um, seroprevalence in the people with acute febrile illnesses. And the proportion of uh, uh, seroprevalence was 10.1% by the Rose Bengal test. Uh, which is uh, currently the uh, most preferred serological test. And, uh, mm, yes, and the DNA was detected, however, in 5.8% per, uh, of these cases. Uh, similarly, the uh, study was published uh, from Lahore hospitals, uh, and uh, it was in the inpatient uh, population. And again, seroprevalence was... Um, around 36.53%. Uh, uh, interestingly, um, 24 uh, seropositive patients uh, um, uh, were also positive by D DNA sampling, and nine of the seronegative patients also tested positive. So this uh, further indicates that uh, serology is not highly sensitive, and, uh, and uh, further testing with uh, PCR is uh, definitely more suggestive, uh, more diagnostic. So um, again, uh, moving on to the actual burden of the disease, because brucellosis is a zoonotic disease. And until and unless we curb the infection in animals, we will not be able to control the disease in humans. So this was a very good review published in the um, uh, Journal of Public Health, uh, and this was the data from Pakistan Animal Brucellosis. And as you can see with the picture pictorial presentation only, that majority of the studies are done in the Punjab province, uh, followed by Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Sindh and Balochistan being quite neglected. Um, so the trust was that uh, highest prevalence, zero prevalence in the animals was also in Punjab, which is 68.8% in cattle and buffaloes and 10.3% for um, bovine, followed by Sindh, which had 17.5% to 25% uh, zero prevalence in cattle, and uh, followed by Khyber Pakhtukhwa and Balochistan. So quite high zero prevalence in the animals. Which brings us to the fact that what are the trends uh, in the brucellosis isolation in recent times? So this uh, was just uh, 
Um, I did a search uh, for five years, uh, starting from 2018 till 2022, to see the trends of brucella isolation from blood cultures. Mind you, this is only the blood culture isolation and not the other uh, samples or the seroprevalence. So uh, this uh, clearly shows that there has been a decrease in the isolation of uh, brucella. Uh, with 21 cases isolated per year in 2018, uh, compared to 20, uh, compared to 12 cases isolated in 2022. However, uh, if we see the zero presence of human brucellosis in Pakistan, as uh, evident in this um, uh, systematic review again, um, the zero prevalence is quite variable uh, depending upon the populations studied, uh, high risk populations, or uh, the inpatients or the outpatients, and it ranges uh, anywhere between five to ten percent by the Rose Bengal test. However, by the standard agglutination test, the zero um, prevalence percentages are. Are quite higher. Okay, so interestingly, what we thought of uh, was that why is uh, Brucella decreasing, whereas the similar pathogen which is caused, uh, which is spread by similar transmission routes, which is Listeria, uh, that on the contrary is increasing. And uh, thanks to Dr. Imran uh, for providing me with this data that he compiled for his uh, research study. Uh, so this clearly shows an increasing trend in listeria uh, isolation from, um, and this is from all the sites, not only blood culture, by the way. So um, why is that so? Uh, it definitely is not because our food safety practices became better. It definitely is not because our vaccination programs for animals became better. So why? Um, any thoughts, audience? So one of the reasons that I could think of was the judicial use of antibiotics. There's a uh, there was one study that I, uh, there were two studies basically that I came across uh, that azithromycin also has a role in uh, brucellosis uh, in vitro activity against brucella. And this was one study that was conducted on 10 patients in which they gave a combination of azithromycin and gentamicin. And out of 10 patients, only three uh, patients had a relapse while the other seven were treated uh, successfully. So um, maybe, maybe because uh, uh, of the increase in XDR cell malignancy, and uh, when the blood cultures are negative, uh, physicians suspect um, uh, typhoid fever because we are living in a high endemic area again. And uh, judicial use of azithromycin, as well as for COVID purposes, azithromycin had been used very judiciously. So maybe that contributed to this decrease, but obviously it's just um, uh, an arbitrary um, uh, thought and not a proven thing. So... Moving on to the transmission. Um, Sobia, uh, can I ask one question? First, yes, uh, you, you did not show any denominators for your uh, Brucella isolation. It will also mm -hmm. be important to see what is the denominator of this and in terms of specimen received. Second is mm -hmm. that maybe um, the, the at-risk population, uh, we are not getting specimens, especially because of COVID and, and that mm -hmm. type of thing the catchment area from which we may be receiving samples from mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. high risk patient is decreased. Uh, exactly. So that would Definitely be needs to be explored, Dr. Kossi. Totally agree with you. Totally agree that uh, the areas that the samples were coming from uh, were the uh, exposures to uh, animals. Like we saw in the um, uh, review that was done in Pakistan that most uh, cases were from the Punjab side of uh, um, the region, so it needs to be explored. That was the. I just wanted to uh, add. Can you hear me? Yes, Dr. Jubeya. Yeah, I just wanted to add that I think you says blood culture. Okay, I said it's isn't that so? Uh, so okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Right. So this is data for from uh, for blood culture only, and and um, over the past four years, I think blood culture ka volume to Doctor Kosar uh, uh, hai. Hmm. So agar ab denominator ke usne hmm. hai, so hmm. I think um, um, we can. But uh, Javeria again, I would say that catchment area is uh, no, no absolutely continuously. Yes, because I uh, agree. AKU. 
is now like no 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 because you know woman did i you got your geographical yeah. role change mm-hmm. but uh, agar hum overall sari usme se keh rahe hain um uh count ki baat mm-hmm. kar rahe hain overall ki count kar rahe hain humne zare geographically to nahi break down kiya mm-hmm. to hamari yield to thodi kam hai hui hai over the years to isme mm-hmm. to hum deny nahi kar sakte yeah so this is just a mini um survey that we did uh, at our setup but uh, obviously it needs to be explored more and uh, in all the aspects that dr boss and dr seema um, just uh, mentioned so our uh, transmission we say that species are highly transmissible organisms that can penetrate the human body through a variety of routes and uh, they include the gastrointestinal tract by consumption of contaminated or unpasteurized milk the conjunctiva and the abraded skin by direct contact with infected animal secretions the laboratory exposure by inhalation of infected aerosols and it may also assess uh, access the blood stream directly as in transfusion related cases or transplacental transmission so um, i was talking about this third point laboratory exposure via inhalation of infected aerosols so uh, before performing the rapid test what was important uh, it was important that uh, when we have a uh, growth of some fastidious organism that uh the calling of algae was also suggestive of uh, brucella the history was uh, suggestive because it was a uh, totally arthritis case and um so uh, the all rapid test all the tests that are performed should be done in a biosafety cabinet and that is what we did and the plates should be taped so that uh, the laboratory exposure uh, may be reduced so uh, now that we know that it's transmitted to humans why is it a silent invader because uh, usually when um uh, toxins or antigens enter the body there is a leukocytic response and pyrogenic cytokines are released which includes the interleukin 1 tumor necrosis factor interferons and they act on the hypothalamic endothelium to produce prost- uh, prostaglandin e2 which in turn rises the uh, cyclic amp waits the set point which causes vasoconstriction and uh, heat production in the body and elicits fever and um the uh, and fever and other um, immune responses so why brucella um, uh, is able to evade all of these responses so number one uh, brucella is an intracellular microorganism and it has the capability to survive within the macrophages because it has specialized systems like uh, wire b secretion type 4 um, uh, secretion system and which uh, helps brucella species to localize in brucella containing vacuoles within the cell or uh, within the cells and these organelles interact with the endoplasmic reticulum to form brucella multiplication compartment furthermore uh, there are um, cyclic beta 1 2 glucans which inhibit the fusion of the phagolysosome and the uh, urease as well which is one of the virulence factors because um, uh, it breaks down carbonic acid uh, urea to carbonic acid and ammonia and uh, thus increases the ph and enables its survival in acidic environment um furthermore we know that the first life line of defense is the macrophages which go and engulf the bacteria uh, so brucella has a um, uh, superoxide dismutase and catalase enzymes which counteract with the reactive oxidase and helps it to survive within the macrophages furthermore uh, brucella also uh, uh, blocks the macrophage apoptosis and thus uh, uh, the uh, macrophages that it resides in they are unable to destroy themselves and um, moreover the lipopolysaccharide of brucella uh, is of the non classical type which elicits low pyrogenicity and a weak inducer of tumor necrosis factor so all of these um, mechanisms combined together helps it to survive intracellularly and um, invade um, and be a silent invader so this is just a schematic representation of uh, what we just discussed transmission uh, from the um, animals to humans an uh, interesting point over here is that uh, brucella has a predilection towards a compound called uh, erythritol which is present in the placenta of uh, um, animals and uh, which is why it uh, causes placentitis in these animals and leads to abortion and uh, when the um, aborted fetus is uh, expelled out uh, humans may become uh, may come in contact contact with the aborted fetus and by the abraded skin uh, it may penetrate and uh, cause infections uh, within humans 
Uh, when brucella enters the um, uh, mucous membranes, uh, we know that polymorphoneutrophils, uh, macrophages, dendritic cells uh, all um, uh, help in interna internalizing the invading bacterium. And from here, the bacteria moves to the regional lymph nodes, and then it spreads to different organs of the reticular endothelial system, such as the lungs, spleen, liver, and bone marrow. And uh, one more interesting part is that uh, this erythro uh, erythritol compound, it's only present in the animal placenta and not in the human placenta. So, um, yeah. Okay, so uh, clinical manifestation. The initial period of brucellosis is usually one to four weeks, but it is very variable and maybe as long as a year. And most common symptoms that are experienced are fever. The pattern is that it waxes and wanes. Uh, arthralgia and fatigue are also common symptoms. Clinical signs, again, include pyrexia, hepatomegaly, which is seen in one third of the patients, followed by splenomegaly, peripheral arthritis, arthritis sacroiliitis, neck stiffness, and lymphadenopathy. Brucellosis uh, can be classified into acute, subacute, and chronic uh, based on the duration of uh, symptoms. Complications. So, Brucella uh, can literally um, affect any organ system of the body, and hence the title, um, the joint venture, because it's uh, uh, it can literally cause infection anywhere in the body. So, uh, osteoarticular manifestations are the most common, uh, and I see in 50% of the cases, and for the sacroiliitis, spondylitis, spondylitis, peripheral arthritis, especially of the large, uh, larger joints of the lower limbs, and the neurobrucellosis, which is seen in up to 10% of the cases and can manifest as acute meningitis, meningoencephalitis, cerebellar involvement, cranial nerve palsies, followed by um, less. Uh, um, common complications like genital urinary, cardiovascular, gastrointestinal, respiratory, and hematological. One of the important complications, however, is seen in pregnant females, uh, and it uh, is significantly associated with the poor outcomes like IUD, spontaneous abortions, low birth weight, and congenital brucellosis in up to 6% of the patients. So now that we know about uh, uh, how um, uh, Diverse, it can uh, the diversity of the presentation uh, of uh, clinical manifestations of brucellosis. Uh, we come to the diagnosis. Uh, diagnostic modalities are divided into culture, serology, and nucleic acid testing. So, blood cultures uh, play an important role because human brucellosis always involves a bacteremic stage, and the blood cultures are a suitable uh, tool for confirming the disease. Um, even uh, because uh, it presents with um, constitutional symptoms which are very vague. So uh, sometimes uh, the diagnosis is missed, but uh, incidentally on blood culture, it's picked up, which was seen in this uh, uh, particular study, which was performed in Israel. And um, 27 blood cultures drawn from 21 patients in whom the disease was suspected, grew brucella, uh, as did the 42 cultures obtained from the individuals in whom the infection was not even considered. So uh, again, the silent invader, it, it, um, it may not uh, uh, manifest uh, as, um, uh, it may not show uh, as uh, uh, many clinical features as uh, it should be. So the sensitivity of blood cultures showed a broad range and it ranges from up to 10 to 90%. And uh, microbial, it depends on multiple factors. Microbial factors, uh, you know, red brucella itself is a fastidious organism. So it uh, takes time to grow. And uh, the patient uh, duration of symptoms, uh, earlier in the duration uh, of symptoms, obviously the chances of blood culture positivity are higher because bacteremic stage uh, is uh, there. And uh, <clears throat> And first infection versus relapse, previous or current antibiotic administration, the volume of the blood culture, the number of the blood cultures obtained, and the incubation period of the blood culture bottles. So uh, this was from the article, um, uh, review article in um, published in um, American Society of Microbiology ASM journals, uh, and um, uh, they uh, recommend multiple blood cultures, uh, of especially um, uh, multiple studies were uh, uh, referenced, one of which was a Turkish study in which uh, the brucella were uh, identified in 83.9% of the patients from whom a pair of blood cultures were drawn compared to 58.6% of the patients in whom a single blood culture was obtained and was statistically significant. 
So um, uh, definitely, the more the black cultures, the more the yield. And uh, adequate black volumes are also important. And the um, minimal volumes should be at least 20 to 30 ml in adults, 2 to 4 ml in children, and more than 10 ml in older children. This is just a um, brief um, overview of the black culture methodologies that have evolved over time. Initially, they were manual methods where we would uh, uh, manually check the turbidity of the black culture broth, and if it became uh, turbid, then it would be subcultured and so on. Followed by the biphasic method in 1947, which included a, a, a tube which contain, contained a slant of a solid agar and a black uh, culture broth. And uh, every week the tube would be <clears throat> tilted and uh, the growth would be observed on the solid agar, which is the slant uh, of the tube. And um, if there was growth, then it uh, needs to be subcultured and resubcultured and so on. Uh, this, however, increased the laboratory exposure to brucella and uh, other um, uh, hazardous organisms. And hence the... Um, uh, and hence, uh, we have more automated systems now, uh, like the Bacteria Alert system, which uh, claims to um, detect uh, brucella within incubation period of three days. So, uh, moving on, uh, bone. Uh, one question that came to my mind was: Like Salmonella, does uh, bone marrow culture have a role in uh, brucellosis? And if it does, then what's superior? Uh, unfortunately, the um, uh, point is uh, quite debatable and there were no um, conclusive results. However, in two, uh, two three studies, bone marrow did uh, show a higher sensitivity because uh, uh, like in, uh, in International Journal of Infectious Diseases, um, 2008 article, Blood CS identified 45.6% cases, whereas bone marrow uh, culture identified 82.5% of the cases. So um, definitely um, the, the percentages are varied among different articles. However, there's no uh, recommendation for uh, bone marrow culture being the gold standard. And um, uh, for the purpose of ease and for, um, because uh, it's easier and blood cultures are more accessible. So for, uh, that is uh, more preferred over bone marrow culture. Then moving on to Malditov, uh, um, any uh, like any automated system is uh, as good as its database. So initially, Malditov um, um, results were inconclusive. However, in recent investigations, Malditov was able to differentiate uh, and identify two species level uh, of uh, Brucella militensis, abortus, and Swiss. However, it could not uh, detect uh, Brucella canis. Uh, nevertheless, the data on performance of this technology are still limited, and um, we need more improved systems for this. Moving on to the serological targets. <clears throat> so serological targets, uh, Brucella, uh, basically um, the two serological targets, the lipopolysaccharide and the cytosol burst. Uh, the lipopolysaccharide, uh, the limitation is that uh, it may cross react with those of a variety of other gram negative organisms, including all of these. So uh, chances of being false positive are very high. And uh, whereas uh, cytosol, proteins uh, lack uh, significant serological cross-reactivity. However, it cannot differentiate Brucella from the genetically related members of the Ocrobacterium. So these are the various serological methods that have been devised uh, throughout these years. The Rose Bengal test, which is a very sensitive test, uh, more than 99% uh, sensitive, uh, and it uses the lipopolysaccharide as the antigen target. And uh, however, uh, as discussed previously, there is um, uh, a, a chance of cross reactivity because it uses lipopolysaccharide as the antigen. And uh, this is an um, uh, agglutination test, uh, as you can see in the picture. Then the rapid tests have been devised, which includes a lateral flow assay and a dipstick assay. And uh, both of these have uh, um, lipopolysaccharide as the uh, antigenic targets and uh, antibodies uh, to these targets in the um, patient's serum are detected. Uh, both of them have good sensitivity and specificity, also their rapid tests. However, uh, more data is needed uh, to um, initiate these tests in clinical setups. Um, this is just a list of multiple serological tests that can be used. 
Uh, and uh, however, the preferable method remains the growth primary test, which uh, is the initial screening test. And if it becomes positive, then the confirmation is by serial dilutions. Uh, by the standard agglutination test and uh, the Rose Bengal test. Complement fixation test and other agglutination tests, they, however, um, are very labor intensive and not routinely performed. And uh, there are also issues of standardization. So they're not recommended as such. Um, and the ELISA, again, uh, it is. Um, <clears throat> uh, a better has a better sensitivity, but uh, again, it requires incubation periods, uh, at least two incubation periods, so uh, labor intensive and um, uh, increased turnaround time. So there are various other methods uh, that have been described in literature, but they have not gained uh, as much popularity because of the limited studies. Um, so false negative, uh, false positive results we have discussed that it could be because of the cross reactivity. However, there could be false negative results as well, uh, uh, depending upon if the test was performed too early, if there was a prozone effect. Prozone effect is basically that the antibody concentration was uh, um, higher as compared to the antigen, and uh, there was uh, and it was not able to form an antigen antibody lattice. So uh, uh, prozone effect, uh, uh, we need to uh, cater by diluting the serum and uh, then uh, other uh, reasons, which would be low affinity antibodies, etc. Which brings us to the nucleic acid testing because blood culture sensitivity was very variable. Serological testing, okay, there was a high risk of, of cross reactivity uh, and not very sensitive uh, because uh, mm, false positive results um, could be uh, there. Uh, so which brings us to the nucleic acid testing. And um, however, nucleic acid uh, testing um, has not gained uh, as much popularity because um, there have been multiple uh, multiplex PCR for joint panels, joint infection panels, and uh, tropical fevers. However, brucella is not a part of any of those. So uh, this is a, a, a serious gap which um, could be, um, you know, uh, catered to in future. Uh, this uh, biofire joint panel, which had 26 targets, but uh, it did not have brucella. So um, these are uh, the areas of future development which uh, can be explored. Management of brucellosis, so if it's a non-localizing disease, doxycycline is recommended for six weeks along with gentamicin for seven days. As in our case, it was arthritis. Uh, so we recommended uh, uh, the physician uh, for, with doxycycline and rifampicin for three months along with gentamicin for the initial seven days IV. Uh, for pregnancy, um, again, uh, the um, because of the uh, teratogenic uh, effects, uh, septron and rifampicin is preferred and uh, uh, treatment duration is for four weeks. Um, however, if the um, gestational age is more than 36 weeks, then only rifampicin monotherapy is advised because uh, septron may, uh, cotrimoxazole may cause um, a risk of connectors. So um, uh, then coming to neurobrucellosis, uh, uh, a combination of three antibiotics is recommended and uh, uh, the treatment should be continued until there is uh, uh, normalization of the CSF. Uh, then endocarditis, uh, the additional thing in endocarditis is that surgical intervention is also required along with um, prolonged duration of antibiotic ther therapy. Uh, moving on to monitoring, this is very important because uh, relapse rates. Uh, relapse is defined as a recurrence of symptoms uh, with or without the presence of uh, blood culture positivity. And uh, the relapse rates in human brucellosis ranges between 4 to 30 percent. And most of them are mainly because of, of the efficacy of the administered treatment, its duration, or the patient's compliance. Because uh, drug resistance in brucellosis is very rare. So that is not um, uh, the common cause of relapse. And most relapses occur within six months after therapy is discontinued. So, which brings us to the tools to monitor. How do we? Um, pick that a patient is relapsing or not responding. So uh, titers are very important. Titers, uh, brucella titers decline slowly and will remain moderately high for months. Uh, serology titer, hence, should be repeated by the end of therapy to demonstrate a decrease in the titer. 
and uh, a study highlighted that um, titers can be uh, can remain uh, elevated and sustained for up to 18 months in 25% of the patients after resolution of the infection. So, um, which again uh, brings us to uh, a situation of um, dilemma that uh, uh, how to confirm them. So uh, then we have nucleic acid testing. And again, um, obviously it is more uh, reliable because uh, again, highlighted in this study by Murata et al, um, the relapse rates uh, uh, detected by uh, nucleic acid testing were, um, it, uh, uh, yes, uh, so it very um, uh, robustly uh, detected relapse rates. Coming to prevention, post-exposure prophylaxis and monitoring. So what happens when we are exposed to, um, for example, inhaled aerosols in the laboratory setup? Uh, what are we supposed to do? So there are different recommendations by different uh, societies. CDC recommends uh, uh, 21 day. Also, it depends whether it was a high risk exposure or a low risk exposure. So high risk exposure is definitely when uh, proper PPE was not being worn, uh, 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 microbiological um, identification was being formed um, outside the biosafety cabinets and within five feet of the personnel performing the uh, test. So that uh, uh, includes the population that were uh, of high exposure risk, whereas others are on low exposure risk. For high exposure risk, um, <clears throat> post-exposure prophylaxis is recommended. Uh, UK guidelines recommend doxycycline or cortamazazole for 21 days, whereas CDC recommends a combination of doxycycline plus rifampicin for 21 days. And again, uh, there is slight uh, the difference in the CO monitoring. Um, uh, the UK guideline uh, recommends uh, CO monitoring at 0, 6, and 12 weeks, whereas the CDC recommends uh, CO monitoring at 0, 6, 12, 18, and 24 weeks. So coming to the prevention of brucellosis, uh, it is not a uh, thing. Uh, uh, um, single-handed uh, person's job because it's a one health approach and requires a multidisciplinary approach uh, because a zoonotic disease uh, cannot be um, controlled in humans unless it is controlled in the animals. So control of animal brucellosis is uh, crucial and this can be obtained by vaccination of domestic cattle, sheep and goats with brucella abortus, uh, S19, RV51 and 104M vaccinations. And for brucella militensis, we have the Rev1 vaccine. However, there's no available vaccine for brucella sue and canis. Um, another strategy is a test and slaughter method, uh, which can be uh, applied to areas where the prevalence rate is not exceeding 2%. So uh, you test the uh, animal if uh, uh, for um, uh, if they're seropositive, and um, uh, on the basis of that, you uh, um, slaughter so that the um, it is not spread to other animals in the uh, herd. So um, occupational exposures uh, definitely needs to be um, catered to, and slaughterhouse workers, meat packing employees, veterinarians, and laboratory workers are the populations at the highest risk, and uh, they contribute to up to 10% of the cases of brucellosis. So increased awareness of meat processing and handling um, and safe disposal of afterbirths of uh, animals and safe laboratory practices, notifying exposures to the Occupational Health Safety Department. All of these uh, would uh, um, uh, lead to prevention of uh, brucellosis. Uh, then the food safety regulations. Brucella organisms can survive up to two days in milk at eight degrees Celsius and up to three weeks in frozen meat and up to three months in goat cheese. Um, and if the soil is damp, then it may remain viable for more than 40 days in animal secretions. So the organisms are sensitive uh, to heat, ionizing radiation and uh, pasteurization. So active um, educational campaigns about avoiding unpasteurized milk products usage as well as policies on its uh, sale should be implemented to prevent brucellosis. So we are now almost towards the end of our presentation. So uh, summarizing the case, 
Uh, the, the case, as we know, was from Lahore, and uh, so it was a high endemic area, as we have seen in the um, uh, systematic reviews um, and the literature from Pakistan that uh, most of the hub is Punjab. Uh, clinical manifestations, definitely, they were suggestive. Potential risk factor in this particular case. Uh, the audience, uh, could you please, um, if uh, anybody wants to volunteer, what could be the potential risk factor in this particular case? Because she did not have any exposure to uh, livestock, no, um, uh, no history of unpasteurized milk consumption as per the father. Yes, transfusion could be one of the, uh, exactly. She was a known case of thalassemia major and was on repeated blood transfusion. So maybe that could be one of the potential risk factor. Uh, however, the, uh, I'll show you in the upcoming slides that the literature on transfusion related um, brucellosis is quite limited. So uh, transfusion definitely could be one of the potential risk factors. Uh, treatment, we already advised to uh, the treating physician, doxycycline and rifampicin for six months and uh, IV gentamicin for the first seven days. And monitoring again, by, uh, we did advise them at least um, uh, Brucella titers. Uh, however, we did not receive any titers, so um, we're not sure if they got it done or not. Uh, these were a few studies that I could find about human to human transmission of brucella, and uh, it showed that um, only 45 uh, brucella human to human cases were identified, out of which only five were transfusion related, and others were sexually transmitted or via bone marrow transplantation or infected aerosol from insect uh, from uh, patients. Um, another study which was conducted in China and uh, uh, in China showed uh, uh, where they um, did a serology, a serological tests on the uh, blood donors, in, but it, this was a single center study. So um, uh, we can't rely, uh, so we can't generalize it, but however, this was one of the study that was published. And uh, in 3.5% of the plasma samples, uh, there was a, uh, they, they were zero positive by the Rose Bengal test. And uh, overall, 15 uh, blood donations were found positive by the nucleic acid testing. So uh, this thus uh, suggests that brucella could be transmitted by blood transfusion uh, route. So that's it from my presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, mm -hmm. Any questions and comments are welcome. Thank you, Sobia. Uh, yeah, a few questions in the chat box. I think uh, we should address those then. Uh, there's a question from SIUT. That what duration of fluid culture need uh, uh, incubation, I think, growth of organism? So they, they're asking okay. about the incubation duration. Okay. Um, so for fluid cultures, uh, I'm not really sure about, but blood cultures I did read about. So uh, the, with the automated uh, systems like that, we recommend 21 days of incubation uh, at least and uh, to render it as no growth. Uh, no, uh, yes. Uh, but I'm not really sure about the fluid cultures. Um, I, I think uh, it's, it's, uh, I have not read any any time duration, uh, but if if we are incubating in a adequate temperature, adequate environment uh, with uh, nutrition in, nutritionally enriched media, um, it grows within a few days. I think just like a blood culture. It grows forty eight to seventy two hours. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so Wajit uh, is asking about lab reports, Brucella abortus and melitensis separately. My question have different types of antigen or method. Uh, I think uh, uh, Wajit it has a um, similar uh, anti um, agglutination test, antigen, antigen uh, detection test. And it uh, depends upon uh, the presence of the uh, pathogens. So we do it in a similar method. Uh, with different antigens. 
Yes, and we have only uh, militancies and waters um, yes. antigens available um, in majority of the setups. And uh, uh, especially Brucella canis uh, has a limitation that uh, serological uh, testing is not uh, uh, recommended or uh, formed because of the low sensitivity and specificity. And, the uh, are the yes. Dr. Kossa is asking, uh, Sobia, what advice can we give to a clinician to improve yield of Brucella from jo joint fluids? <clears throat> mm. I think um, before starting empirical therapy, they should um, uh, collect the joint fluid. That is one very basic thing that I could think of. And um, other than that, um, so, we have you come across any studies uh, which have uh, reported superior yield from blood culture bottle as opposed mm -hmm. to yeah. Yes, uh, you know, send it in a blood culture bottle, yes. So, always keep some uh, this differential on the mind, especially in some uh, immunocompromised population and whenever they tap the blood and uh, any uh, joint fluids. So always inform the chronic history or like this, and if better to inoculate in the uh, more enriched like blood culture bottles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so any any other questions from participant? So uh, regarding the Brucilla uh, serological test, so uh, what what titers are uh, significant uh, in? Is there any difference in between? Uh, endemic area or non-endemic area or should we uh, uh, label uh, 3 three twenty one is to 320 type titles as significant or 1 is to 160? Okay. Uh, so uh, basically uh, when um, the titers are more than uh, 1 is to 80, we perform serial dilutions uh, on that specific um, uh, test and uh, there should be a to label it as a significant uh, titer. There should be at least a fourfold increase in the titer from the baseline to label it as significant. And uh, I also read, uh, yes, you're right. Uh, titers of one is to uh, three sixty were considered significant in a lot of studies. However, in uh, majority of the studies, they were talking about the increase in the titers from the baseline, not only just a single uh, titer. Somia, uh, can you elaborate uh, methods of performing AST? Is there any recommendation of, of, to do the uh, AST testing in Brusilla? Hmm. Uh, uh, by the uh, MICs are performed uh, by ETS method. And um, yeah. Is in relapse cases, how significant do you rely on serology? Mm, I don't have idea. Uh, can anybody all, uh, can chip in in the last yeah, cases? Uh, the last case, the last cases. Well, uh, thank you, Doctor Tishan. It's a very excellent presentation and very nice. And um, yes. here um, uh, again, uh, we all uh, continue to be confused with uh, serology because in blood cultures, very rarely we we get uh, the report from the laboratory other than AKU, basically. So oh. we, we we always rely on um, serology. Uh, yeah. uh, relapse, I don't know, but for, uh, for uh, definite diagnosis, serology is always uh, considered and uh, we just uh, uh, consider uh, one, one to 160 uh, above, more than 1 to 160 as diagnostic, not uh, uh, and one, one, one is to 160 or below. So uh, this is here and uh, sometimes the, the laboratory, they report all types of brucella, like uh, just the, the Vajid has said that meritant days, aborters, everybody, every uh, species they report as one is to 160 positive. So again, at this, um, this is also a very confusing report which we get. Um, yes, I think it's a challenge because uh... 
सोविया हैज टोल्ड अस दैट देयर इज अ क्रॉस रिएक्टिविटी आल्सो मे बी अगर कैन आई ऐड समथिंग इन केस ऑफ रिलैप्स इफ द टाइटर ऑफ सीरोलॉजी आर इंक्रीजिंग मे बी देन वी कैन से दैट प्रोबब्ली द इंफेक्शन इज नॉट रिजॉल्विंग और इट इज गेटिंग वर्स सो वन पैरामीटर मे बी ऑफ है yeah or maybe maybe uh, the, the blood culture as you have said that blood culture should be uh, the the volume should be 10 to 20 ml so maybe hum itna volume bhej nahi rahe apne patient ka to shayad hum diagnose nahi kar pa rahe ho ye ho sakta hai ji doctor ji doctor sahab matlab ye to bilkul buniyadi sa hamara wo hai ki hum har ek culture mein ye kehte hain ki volume jab tak adequate nahi hoga to yield utni zyada achhi nahi hogi plus blood culture systems bhi हाँ लेकिन फिर भी आप लोग तो आपके पास तो बाहर बाहर से सैंपल्स आते हैं वो भी जरूरी नहीं कि टेन एम हो ब्लड लेकिन आप नहीं, नहीं, नहीं होते नहीं, नहीं होते डॉक्टर नहीं होते डॉक्टर बहुत ही वो होते हैं हमने आइसोलेट नहीं किया हमारे पास डॉक्टर क्या होता है इसकी जो ग्राम्स एंड मोरफोलॉजी होती है ना जो हम देखते हैं तो इतनी टाइनी होते हैं ना एंड समाइम अगर वो उसको हम वो ना करें ना एंटिसिपेट ना करें so we can easily miss it. और वो अगले दिन ग्रो भी नहीं करते इसे नॉर्मल में की बात तो वो हम चांस के मिस कर देना कि ग्रो नहीं किया सो वो तो मॉर्फोलॉजी है ग्राम सेल में वो इतनी टाइनी होते हैं बड़ी पिक्यूलियर सी होती है ना सो so हमारे रेजिडेंट और टेक्नोलॉजी वो तो बहुत ज्यादा ना उनकी आंखें ट्यून हो गई शायद इस ना तो फॉरन पिक कर लेते हैं हां जी जी रोको से कुछ कह रही हैं नहीं 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 मैं भी कह रही थी सोबिया दिस वाज एन एक्सीलेंट प्रेजेंटेशन यू हैव डन इट वेरी वेल बहुत अच्छा लिटरेचर सर्च किया था सर सोबिया ने बहुत अच्छे तरीके से बड़ी मेथड के साथ इसको प्रेजेंट किया थैंक यू वो यूनिक सा केस था बड़ा या आई एग्रीड सो कैन वी कंक्लूड द सेशन यस इट्स 4 पीएम thank you everyone yes thank you everyone thank so nice of you thank you thank you so much 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 thank you